What's up guys and welcome to my video. This video is all about setting up a Wi-Fi router in the most simplest way possible. If you need help understanding what a router does and what you need for buying one, then just click here and I've done a simple video just explaining what they are and what they do. Now setting up a Wi-Fi router may seem very difficult, but these days it is very simple and easy to do. However, there are some things you should be doing to make sure they're set up both efficiently and in a way that's secure. Now firstly, you need to know if it's an ADSL or cable type router. This will say on the box or in the instruction manual. If it's an ADSL router, you simply plug a little filter into your phone line, and then you have one cable going out of that to your phone, and then one cable going into the router. So plug that into your router. If it's a cable type router, and this will be if you have a fiber optic connection, then you simply plug an ethernet cable from your modem into the back of your router. The port you plug it into will be the most isolated one. There normally be about four ports on the back with one isolated next to it. And that's the one you need to plug it into. If you're not sure, look in your instructions. Now the next thing you need to do is plug the router into the wall and then plug an ethernet cable from one of the other ports on the back of your router to your computer. If your computer doesn't have an ethernet connection, then you may be able to do this using a wireless connection. You need to use the default details that's on the back of your router but do check your router documentation to see if it allows this. Now the reason we're configuring this router is not only to change the details to make sure it's easy for you to use in the future, but it's also to make it a lot more secure. Once your computer is connected to your router, either by wireless or by ethernet, you then need to go about configuring it. Now you do this by logging into your router. You go into your browser and there is an address specified in your instructions that you need to enter. This is often an IP address which starts with the number 192, but it may be a web address as well. Again, check your documentation, it will tell you this. Now you'll be prompted to log into your router using some details. This is to make sure that it's secure, but the default details aren't secure at all. They're normally admin and the password password, but it says this on the back of your router. Once you're logged in, you'll get some sort of screen somewhat resembling this here. And so the first thing I'd say to do is change that really unsecure password that you've just entered into your router. To do this, go into something like admin or security settings, it depends from router to router, and then just change the password to something that you're going to remember. This is for you to remember, it's not for anyone else, you don't need to give it to anyone else when they log onto the internet or anything, so make sure it's something that you know and someone else doesn't. It's worth noting that if you forget this password, there is a reset button on the back of the router so that you can reset it if you forget in the future. Now the next thing to do is configure the Wi-Fi settings. This is usually a button that says Wi-Fi settings. You're going to want to change the name and the password that you use to connect to the router. So to do this, change the SSID, which is just the name, and change it to a name to really anything you like. However, the SSID shouldn't identify either you or the router manufacturer. So for example, don't put in Mr. Brown's Netgear because then they're gonna know it's Mr. Brown's Wi-Fi and it's a Netgear router and that'll make it a lot easier for someone to hack. Now the next thing to do is change the password. So this will just be underneath the SSID. Make sure you select the WPA2 security and then enter a password of your choice. It will tell you if you can't use any of those characters, so just use something that you're going to remember. But the key thing here is that you are going to be giving this password to anyone that you want to have access to your internet. So if it's, say, the same password that's used on your, say, Amazon account, don't do that. That's not secure at all. You're going to be giving it to all your guests. Come up with something new and original has to be secure, but it doesn't have to be as secure because it's not so much your credit card details, but it is worth noting that this is quite an important password, so do make sure it is as secure as possible. Now, you may be given the option to use what's called the 5 gigahertz band. Now, unless you know what this is and know that you actually need to use it, I would disable it and not use that for the time being. This is because what it does is it increases the speed of your network, but it increases the speed of your network at the cost of range, so you're going to get reduced range, but also compatibility. Some older devices, and I'm not really talking that old here, won't work if it's got the 5 gigahertz band enabled, and so it just won't show up. So you're better off sticking with the 2.4 gigahertz band, which is the default one, unless you know you need to use the 5 gigahertz band. On some routers, however, it gives you the option to use what's known as dual band, so operating on both the 2.4 gigahertz band and the 5 gigahertz band. This way, all the devices in your home will be able to work with it, and the ones that accept the higher connection will work with the higher connection. Lastly, scour through your router settings and find something called remote management. This, as it says on the tin, allows remote management of all the settings, and so you want this to be off just to make sure it's more secure. Now, there are many other settings in your router, but unless something doesn't work, I would say leave these unless you know what they're doing because you don't want to risk, say, mucking up your internet. But all the default settings are there 
has quite friendly options and so you shouldn't need to change any of them. If you are using an ADSL router then you may need to enter your internet name and password. This should all come with the documentation so it should be pretty self-explanatory if you need to do that. But if you can't get it to work and you're on an ADSL network, that's probably the problem. Now it should be all set up and your network should be optimised for all your devices. And you'll be able to remember the name and password without having to go and look in the back of your router or get that card. And that is the end of this video. I hope it's been quite simple and straightforward to understand. It is kind of a complicated topic but I hope I've explained it in a way that you now understand what you need to do. And if you've been following this step by step, I hope you're set up and ready to go. So, if you've thought this video has been useful, um, hit the like button, it does help and it lets other people know that this is a video worth watching. But if it's not a video worth watching and that everyone involved have wasted their time, then hit the dislike button. You know, it's fair enough, we need to be taught a lesson. And for more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and you get PCs, gaming and technology related videos straight into your feed um, through the subscriber tab. So, it's free to do, why not do it today? All that's left to say is thank you very much for your time and I will see you next time.